Hey, welcome back to Ask the Professor with the Texas RV Professor Terry Cooper down there in Waco, Texas. I'm Dave Dufour, and we are talking about towing uh, issues today. And uh, we just uh, had a little discussion about uh, the couple of different kinds of, of hitch packages and uh, and how the uh, how they. Uh, accommodate and well enhance the safety of driving and make it easier to control vehicles which is always important but there's another aspect that uh, of uh, of towing that I don't know do maybe people don't think about it so much or they have some misconceptions about and that has to do with your tires absolutely and and so uh, what um, uh, with, with is this is tires tire selection is kind of the first uh, important issue here and you have to you have to pick the right the right ones, right? Absolutely. You know, it's amazing the things that we we survive in our in our childhood. You mm -hmm. know, I was raised on a dairy farm, and so we, you know, we would haul our livestock, and we always used mom's old tires, the ones off of her automobile, mm -hmm. to put them on our trailer. Never could understand why we would spend a lot of time on the side of the road broke down with blowouts. <laughs> but now that I've gotten older and understand how this works, I'm beginning to kind of put this together. I, I think I'm getting it now. So. Okay. <laughs> Don't use <laughs> mom's say, old I, I tires. I used to be S-L-O-W, but I'm much better now. There so. you go. There you go. Well, so uh, what? Uh, we, we have a graphic here which talks about the different types of tires. And uh, and uh, truck tires are not the same as travel trailer tires or towing tires, right? Not at all. There's differences there, and we need to, need to be aware of it. You know, typically when you look at, trailers, fifth wheels, we're going to be using one of three different types of tires. We're either use the passenger tires or what we call the ST tires, which is basically a special trailer or a special type, depends on who you talk to. And then, of course, we'll see light truck, which is things that we would use maybe on a pickup, a three-quarter ton or one-ton truck. The key to the whole thing, though, Dave, is that a lot of people like myself had been using the passenger tires in place of just the regular trailer tires. Mm -hmm. Well, what I didn't realize was is that if we utilize that, we have to decrease the cargo carrying capacity of that tire by 10% because of the sidewalls are different, the tread layout is different, and so they just are not made to handle the same load that a special trailer tire is made. Okay. And how do you know? I mean, you're saying by, you know, decrease the load by 10%. Are they, where, do, where do we find that rating? Well, if you look on the sidewall, there is uh, all those ratings. It talks about the tire type. So if it starts with a P, we know that it's a passenger. If it starts with an ST, then we know it's special trailer. And, of right. course, LT stands for light truck. But all of that information is on that sidewall. It's, it's mandated by the federal government that it be there. Mm -hmm. So that way we know what our weight capacity is and also what our maximum air pressure should be. Okay. And quite honestly, when we look at these RVs that we deal with, the running gear, when I say running gear, we're talking tires and bearings and springs and brakes and axles. And all of that, that is really our weak link in our RV. I mean, we can load that box up all we want, mm -hmm. but if the running gear can't handle it, we're not going to get very far down the highway. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know? um, okay, well, then, um, let's see, we have another. Here's a, now, now, you've got a picture here of baby powder. What, what does baby powder have to do with all of this? I knew that would grab you. That's why I put it in there. There you go. Is this your tires or your babies? Or you're taking care of your babies with your tire or what? Well, this is, you know, I, I think I there's, think a, there's Amy a plus Grant sign a there too. Baby, baby, I think it was. But anyway, long and short of it is that if you look at the tires that we have, mm -hmm. particularly on RVs, it's not that we wear them out. They usually go bad because of dry rot or you know UV damage from the mm -hmm. sun. Right. And the easiest way to find out what kind of tire damage you've got just because if you do a visual, a visual inspection of it can't always tell but if you'll take baby powder put it in your hand and then rub it on the side walls mm -hmm. of the trailer tire you'll be able to find all the little cracks you'll find stone bruises all those different cuts and nicks they just seem to glare out at you when you put that white powder on it right now some people like to use a baby powder or talcum powder and it doesn't have to be the nice name brand that has perfume in it but you're just looking for something to go into the crack so that way it'll stand out and let you know that there's a problem with those tires okay so and then and is that is that almost is that like a replace them now kind of thing if you see something or is it just keep an eye on it or how do you know if it's excessive you're really looking at you better be replacing Absolutely. is that right okay uh, now, you know, there's also a date on those tires that we call it the date of birth or the date of manufacture, and that code tells you, you know, how long those tires have been around. And, and all the manufacturers will come out on their, 
on their websites and they'll tell you, you know, you need to replace this tire after five years or seven years or whatever. And, you know, that's one of the things that we have to educate ourselves on, knowing when to replace a tire. And it's, you know, we think we're being very frugal with our money, mm -hmm. but until you spent you know, better part of a day on the side of the highway, and then you pay a premium to get somebody to come out and get you off the side of the highway and buy a new tire, then all of a sudden that money you thought you were saving, mm -hmm. you really didn't. Okay. Well, the, the, the next area that we have to go into, of course, is uh, you, know, when you, you can hook up the, tra the trailer, uh, but then there's also some electrical. It seems like there's always electricity on trailers that you got to deal with. <laughs> so there, but there are electrical issues, of course, with uh, running lights and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. We have, I, we have some graphics here that you provide us with to show this f uh, flat four-pin wiring hookup. Is this pretty standard on most of the uh, RVs, most of the trollables? Actually... Actually, it's on your smaller trailers. Now, we're talking okay. more like the uh, the bass boat and things mm -hmm. like that. But I wanted to make sure that everyone understands there is a wiring standard that we need to work by. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, um, and, and this is, now this is going to sound really kind of texty, but let me just go ahead and tell you. Okay. When you look at the four-pin wire, the green wire is for the right-hand tail light, which also runs your brake light. Now, okay. that happens to be the green grass of the bar ditch. Okay. 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 The yellow <laughs> is going to be our left-hand side. Now, that's going to be for our left-hand turn signal and our brake light. Yeah. And that's also where the yellow stripe down the middle of the highway goes. Okay. So, green for right, yellow for left. Now, the brown, now that's a little awkward. Now, here around here, we talk about it. That's the brown eyes of the roadkill you just ran over. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And that's and the what? brown is going to be your running lights, and that's, that's the last light, thing that you run over them. Okay, over. I think I'm getting it here. And then the white is the white is our ground. That's your ground, and that's okay. what we're going to tie to chassis. Yeah. Okay. There so you, you ought go. to be able to re remember one out of four. Oh you know, my white goodness! Is just ground. You know, uh, green I'm, for grass, yellow for stripe, and brown for the brown eyes of the roadkill. There you go. That's perfect. That's great. Now, you know, I'll never forget that. I'm sure I won't. And uh, and in fact, uh, we got a, I got a couple of uh, RV techs that, that live around in this area that work for some of the companies here, and I may just I may just share that with them in case they don't already know it. <laughs> so well, that may be a Texas special. I don't okay. know, but that's how I used to train my techs, and they right. never would forget it. All right. Well, that's just those are four wires there. Now you've got something here also called it. There's a, there's also a seven way trailer connector. Tell us about that. Well, because these. These fifth wheels and these travel trailers are going to pull a little bit more weight. They've got a few more requirements. We have to add some additional things. You know, granted, we've got the tur left turn and the brake and the right turn and brake mm -hmm. and the running lights. But we also have added some additional things here. And one of them in particular is going to be um, we've got to have something to run the brakes, the electric brakes, because our vehicles are going to have a brake controller in there. And basically, when you step on the brake through one of three methods, we're going to send some voltage back to that trailer mm -hmm. and shut those electric brakes down and so we've got to have a power cord and that's always the blue wire always the blue mm -hmm. is it blue for brakes well you'll be blue if you don't stop <laughs> there you go well it, it, that you you definitely don't want your tow vehicle having to take all the way to that vehicle in the back to stop that vehicle Stop exactly, the trailer, and that's the problem we run into. I mean, let's face it. You know, we may have a super duper, you know, truck that we're pulling it with, but if we don't have everything carrying its own load and, and doing its own braking, all of a sudden we're not going to be able to stop when we need to. Okay. And all right. Well, stopping is important. Even though you like to go down the road, it's important to stop once in a while. So, uh, great. Okay. Uh, we are going to be back in just a moment with more of Ask the Professor and with more uh, with your questions for the Texas RV Professor. So, don't go away. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned. 
Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.